This comic book is the most iconic story in the Marvel Universe. It was written by Stan Lee and drawn by the legendary artist Steve Ditko. The Amazing Fantasy issue 15 revealed a new superhero, what would later become a well-known superhero of the modern age. While Stanley had written various iconic titles before, this catapulted his career to new heights. Under Lee's vision, Marvel Comics transitioned from a campy World War II propaganda engine to a clear medium. This medium resonated with a far wider demographic than middle school age children. Stanley championed the idea of the unlikely hero, the underdog, a superhero with flaws. Superheroes were always battling fears of failure, inadequacy, feeling exposed, losing one's life to duty and service, family neglect, loss of autonomy, moral or personal failure. Lee's superheroes were relatable. They were human with flaws of their own. That's what made Stan Lee's creations unique from the pack. It was distinct from the best-selling comic book magazine DC. Instead of utilizing the archetypal red-caped messiahs, Stan Lee did something different. He transformed the industry by making his heroes conflicted, diverse, and understandable in the real world. Spider-Man was that turning point for the comic book writer. It revealed the pains and struggles with the teenager being a hero in one sense, being viewed as a public menace by others, and throughout all this, he had to conceal his identity and deal with the awkwardness of being a young emerging adult. In this comic book, issue 15 helped Stan Lee achieve a unique look on the superhero mantle. Now let's observe this manga series called Karakuri Dozi Rootsi Mo, or translated in English, Mechanical Boy, Ultimo. In 2008, Stan Lee became the most influential comic book writer of our century. He created some of the most beloved comic franchise media properties. He dropped everything he had now and worked on something that was completely new to him. It was something out of his lane, something that would prove to be quite unique in a different kind of way. Every hero has an origin story. Mechanical Boy, Ultimo's story, started when various comic magazine companies in the US and Japan, Stan Lee's POW Entertainment, Dream Ranch, and JEA, collaborated on an idea to bring in Stan Lee with the creative talents of manga artist Hiroyuki Taki known for the popular manga series Shaman King, which has sold over 38 million copies since its conception. This manga series was sold through the popular manga outlet. It was distributed through North American provider Viz Media in their Shonen Jump magazine, which has since been de-established. Stan Lee's thought process was to create a story that both Japanese and American readers could appreciate. During the process of creating this series, Lee had to meet with his Japanese counterpart virtually. He spoke with them through translators, a part of the process that had brought challenges to the elderly comics creator. The series ran from April 18, 2008 to October 16, 2015 in 12 volumes. Together, the pair created a bizarre concoction, a literary oddity of its time, you might say. The premise of the manga series revolves around a robotic child named Ultimo. It was created by Dr. Roger Dunstan in the 12th century Japan. It meant to represent and embody all good in this world. Its robotic counterpart, Vice, was built to represent and embody absolute evil. The mad Dr. Dunstan sought to create the dual entities as a last curse upon this world. While traveling through old Kyoto, Dunstan allegedly carries two boxes concealing the automatons. He is then attacked by a group of bandits, led by a young man named Yamato. Once the boxes are opened by the bandits, the doji are released, awakening the world to the long-standing battle between the forces of good and evil. Thus, Ultimo and Vice would battle against each other to discover which force is more powerful in this world. Eventually, Vice and Ultimo are left forgotten in the dust of time. Centuries later, Yamato Agari, a high school student who is the reincarnate of the bandit Yamato, becomes Ultimo's master after awakening the android child from its slumber of obscurity. Ultimo discovers that Vice has also resurfaced and that Dr. Dunstan activated seven other evil doji robots, a possible nod to seven deadly sins represented in Christian thought, 
that Ultimo must vanquish. Lee also used six good androids meant to perhaps convey the six perfections of Buddhism. After realizing his connection to Ultimo in a past life, Yamato offers his help to the robot child on his quest to defeat his evil duality and the force of the wickedness that Vice personifies. Yamato also becomes aware of the fact that the battle of good versus evil is still taking place, that his family and friends are involved in different sides of the battle. Ultimo and Yamato battle people that have partner dojis of their own, which echoes a similar tone with more popular Japanese franchises like Pokemon, who also had past incarnated lives in the 12th century feudal Japan that influences who they are in the present age. Vice's master is Kei, who was originally an emperor named Kotsutsobu Katamari, who was engaged to Lady Gekko until he was overthrown by Yamato's 12th century bandit incarnation. In modern times, he is a police officer in West Tokyo. Throughout the series run, the concept of time travel and reincarnation is often mentioned. The antagonist of this series, Dr. Dunstan, is additionally revealed to be a time traveler from the 31st century, with his main intent to match the forces of good and evil in a battle against time to prove which is superior in an apocalyptic event known as the Hundred Machine Funeral. If all that isn't absurd enough, the main villain of the series, Dr. Dunstan, is meant to be Stan Lee himself. I mean, who else would this be? To make things even more plain and obvious, the villain even screams Stan Lee's favorite catchphrase, Excelsior! And if you think making yourself the villain of a weirdly complex and symbolic manga series about a robot child time travelers is completely ridiculous, you haven't even heard the part where Stan Lee, Dr. Dunstan, is omnipotent. This would make him a nearly unstoppable supervillain. As he powers up, you can see him depicting a reimagining of Jack shirtless and tattooed Stan Lee ascending over the city skylight. The opposing androids forge a mutual alliance against Dr. Dunstan. They overwhelm him and thus put into question what is good and evil. The conclusive narrative that the series sought to convey was that good and evil must balance each other. It's a message that is synonymous with Eastern religious thinking. It's instilled in the values and concepts of Buddhism and Taoism, which is symbolically woven in that story narrative. Once Dr. Dunstan realizes the robots shared intellectual enlightenment, he sends Yamato and his doji back before the 100 machine funeral. It brings them back to life in their human form, to their original ages. Making the dojis human alongside their former masters transforms their world into a state of peace with, Dr. with Dunstan keeping watch over them. All this becomes even more allegorical in a very odd twist. Stanley is breaking the fourth wall by projecting the notion of being a controller of his own fictional world that we perceive as onlookers. He has the power to pit good against evil and see what the outcome is. That is, in a non-literal way, his role as a comic book writer and with Dunstan's ability to be omnipotent over his creations, he can make anything happen in the way he wants to. Some have even suggested that the theme of reincarnation is an attempt by Stan Lee to describe how creators use old ideas and bring them back to life. The irony in all this is how metaphorical this story is and how relevant it is to consider as a content creator. While the story can be difficult to follow, it does seem to be Lee's way of understanding the complexity of the human relationship involving the great responsibility of being creative. Stan Lee is influencing the narrative. He is world building. He is conveying the good side and bad side of human nature. It may seem a bit jarring to think that Lee was trying to play God. It's interesting that he considered himself an antagonist, though, who is a singular creator of this cosmic simulation. Stan Lee was born Jewish, and yet his agnostic when conceptualizing religion. He was often known to entertain notions of religious thought and was not known to be anti-religious. Yet he did question the perfection of God. This story serves as an example of his distrust by portraying himself as an antagonistic force seeking to play with man's true nature. A story that is unsettling to me is one with its prime message being that evil and good must balance. This is because it denies a significant factor in our own infallibility and reduces the creator of the story to the role of the observer. It prevents us from having a need for a superhero or someone great, perfect, wise, and glorious, while we are not. It prevents us from a need for salvation or a need for saving. 
not having this prevents a need to conform to a higher power, to submit ourselves as dutiful creations to a most excellent creator. What I think Stanley misses in this instance is that we need that force of greater good. Enough said. Regardless, Stanley's foray into a Western meets Eastern cultural fusion is impressively wild and weird. Many of Stanley's conceptions from previous creations seem to be recycled. Examples include the compactions to Silver Surfer and Galactus from Marvel Comics with Vice and Ultimo in the manga series. Both encapsulated philosophical conceptions from a cosmic setting. The teenage human character of Yamato seems familiar. It bears a similar personality and characteristics of the tragic young hero like Peter Parker. The name Ultimo itself described a villainous robot that fought against Iron Man in the comics created by a creator with mixed motives. All that said, it's obvious Stan Lee borrowed from his previous work in this manga series. While Mechanical Boy, Ultimo never gained momentum and was pulled from circulation in the mid-2010s, it highlighted a meta moment in which Stan Lee created a version of himself as a creator. Maybe Lee was in over his head with his project, or he left behind an odd and entertaining manga series that deserves more attention from the public. Thank you for watching this far in our video. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to get more in-depth videos about culture. Special shout out to Kel Wilson, who commented on our previous video, which you can watch here. This manga series was sold through the popular manga outlet, Shuashi. Through the popular manga outlet, Shuasha. Shuasha.